I'm Steve from This Week with Cars. Right now I'm driving a 1973 Jaguar E-Type. And although this is a fairly straight road, you can see that the steering wheel is not in the correct position. This car needed a new steering rack, and now all the suspension adjustments have been made. As you can see, if I take my hands off the wheel, it drives straight. But the steering wheel is not in line. You don't want to align your toe that it straightens the steering wheel at the same time that you're setting the toe because then your toe, tie rods on each side will be different sized, allowing you to only turn the wheel less in one direction than the other. So you want to make sure that when you are setting the toe that you're setting it so that the rack is centered and not the steering wheel. The fix for the steering wheel not being centered now will actually be to pull the steering wheel off, change its position on the splines, and reattach it. On a Jaguar of this vintage, you may be wondering how you do that. You wouldn't want to just try to pull this horn button off. That would be the wrong thing to do. So today I'd like to show you how to pull the steering wheel off a Jaguar of this vintage. I have made note, I've made a little mark here on the steering wheel of where straight is currently so that I can make sure that I, when I'm pulling it into the garage that that position is up. So I can pull the steering wheel off, straighten it, and make sure that the steering column is lined up in the exact correct position. That's probably the number one and most important thing to do is to make sure that you know where the straight position on the wheel currently is while you're out driving it. And make sure that you're out on the road when you're doing this. If you're trying to do it in a short distance, you may not get that center position exactly correct. So let's get this back in the garage and I'll get the steering wheel pulled off. I'll show you how to properly do that job. The steering wheels in these cars are telescopic, so loosen your collar and then pull your steering wheel all the way back. That will give you a lot better access to the back side of the steering wheel, which is where we are going to be removing this from. On the back side of the steering wheel, the steering wheel is held on with these rivets, but there are a couple screws. Uh, you may have Allen screws, you may have different types of screws. Here I have Phillips head screws. So this is what holds the front of uh, the horn button assembly on. So I'll just unscrew these and then I'll have access to the nut that holds the steering wheel on. The spring button on the horn assembly will push the horn assembly off once you get the last screws undone. As this pin has a spring on it, it'll force this out. And it'll probably pop off and land on the floor. Then we have a nut here that holds the steering wheel on. In front of the nut that holds the steering wheel on is a locking nut. That takes a 15 16 socket to remove. It's just a small sheet metal nut. And then you can remove the steering wheel nut with a one inch socket. Now with the steering wheel still in the position that keeps the steering rack straight when going down the road, just pull on it a little and pull the steering wheel off of the splines. Now rotate the steering wheel to the direction so that it is in the correct position for going straight down the road and push it back on the splines. Be careful not to cross thread the splines. The process to reassemble it is the reverse of the way you took it apart. To reassemble the horn button, you're going to have to press this against the steering wheel to get it lined up. So it might be easier to put one of the bolts through first so that you can get that hole lined up easier. I am going to start all of these by hand to make sure that I don't cross thread any of them. There we have it, a steering wheel facing the correct direction after putting a new rack and adjusting the tie rods on this car. Of course, having your steering wheel off center is something that doesn't take a new rack to do. If someone has adjusted the tie rods or the suspension has just gone out of alignment with the steering wheel, this might be something that you need to do on your car. To verify that the steering wheel is correct, I'm going to take the car for a little drive. We'll make sure that the steering wheel is still in the correct position when it's going down the road. Depending on how coarse or fine the spline on the steering column is, will determine how close you can get the steering wheel just by removing it and putting it back on. You can see this is 
really pretty good. To make a finer adjustment than this, you'll have to adjust that within your toe adjustments. But you don't have to worry about shortening the tie rods at that point because it will be such a minor adjustment that you won't notice it and how much you're able to steer back and forth. I'll show you how to do this in another video. Since I already have this car out, I can tell you a little bit about I've owned several V12 Jaguars, and the E-Types or XKEs like this one are really grand touring cars. These are not really sports cars. These are bigger in every dimension from the earlier E-Types. These are wider, they're much longer, and they are just a really good vehicle for conquering long distances of road. The V12 engine is very powerful, but it does not make power in the way that you would think of for a sports car. It more makes power that you would think of from a locomotive. When you push the gas pedal down, it just constantly gives you power. Is it? It isn't this great burst of power. It's just a constant, continual power, and it just keeps on going. It surprises you for how long this engine will continue to give you power. The longer length on the car does make it easier to control when you're on the edge. This is a great car to throw around drifted around corners, the extra length makes it very easy to drive. The creature comforts in this car are very much like you would expect from the all of the previous generations of the E-Type, but I would definitely say that this engine is a lot more refined, uh, quiet, and smooth from the six-cylinder. That's it for today. I'll see you next time.